And this is what he said. In your brain, you have a neuron. You have the nucleus, the long fiber called the axon, the short fiber, the dendrite. Dendrite receives, the axon sends. And he says, if you have hypertension, your axons begin to, I'm sorry, the dendrites begin to disintegrate. If you have hypertension, you take a pill, numbers come down. Do the dendrites continue to disintegrate? Yes. Why? You cannot cover up transgression of the health law with a pill. You can't. You can't. Can you? Yes, brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, indirectly, but we'll shift over and talk about it directly. Yeah, we, we know how to lose weight, right? Eat more, weigh less, eat kale. <laughs> yeah, it's, you, can't, you can't short circuit anything. You can change the manifestation of the problem, but you can't solve the problem, right? That just makes sense. Next. Nobody's up there. Thank you. Thank you, Jude. His name is Jude, right? Next. Yeah. Treatment with statins in elderly patients, that's the one next. That's just, now you get a review. That's what I was saying. 65, they tried to put me on statin drugs because my 10-year risk, they said, this will help me. I was not buying into it. I love doctors, don't you? But I love health more, don't you? Doctors are wonderful. I love them. I've worked with them for 30 years. Don't you? Next. The most efficient treatment against atherosclerosis is a treatment, oh yeah, with statins, next. Yeah, you just get a review. And then Lipitor, right, here you go. They do this by blocking an action in the liver. That's how they work. And the process, statin over time, destroys your liver. Yeah. Now, I'll show you in a minute, the, the evidence. Here you sit in the church. You remove one kidney, can you still leave the church? You remove one lung, can you still leave the church? You remove your liver, you don't get out of the seat. Instant death. Keep your liver safe. Next. You're down here. Right there. They do this by blocking the action of an enzyme in the liver that is necessary for making cholesterol. The next slide is some of the side effects if we, if we get to it. Side effects. Now back up one. That one is? Well? Plug, plug the other one in. Plug this one in. We'll see if that will work. Yeah. We'll see. Plug that one in. I've been in a lot of things where people got really hurt. I've escaped injury most of the time. Uh, I'll tell you what I say. We're in some kind of crisis. The guy almost gets killed. I say, we lost everything but you're okay. The clicker is broken, but Jude is not, right? We want to keep him safe. Uh, this is, can you see this HMG? <laughs> HMG, COA, reductase, inhibitor, statin side effects. They got a mnemonic device, right? The first one, destruction of the liver. The second, destruction of your muscles. The next one, destruction of your GI tract. The next one, Hard to, uh, next, because it describes what it is. What does it do? <laughs> it could kill you. Go back one. The next one, it destroys your, go back one, pan pancreas, increased risk of diabetes. That's a statin drug. That's proven. That's in the label when you open the box. 
it's not instant and you might not get all of them but wouldn't it be better just to have a salad and a cucumber sandwich <laughs> next <laughs> next yeah this that uh, ah neurological side effects statins have been linked to memory loss or amotrophic lateral scler what's that ALS dear friends that's Lou Gehrig's disease it destroys your mind it destroys your mind your body your muscles your GI tract it might not do it for a long time it might not do it at all but the potential is there if I were on a statin drug what would I be thinking I, that's it I gotta get off that thing what do I have to do to get off of it no no yeah, you got, don't, don't stop until, unless you're going to make a what? Lifestyle change. You said this morning we walked. It's either walk up the hill or be buried under the hill, right? You got to do one or the other. You thought I was flying. That man right there, hey, boom. I don't want, Lou Gehrig disease? That is a slow, miserable experience to die like that. Next. I just blew it up so you could read it. Next. Yeah, we got the, we got the pictures now. Praise the Lord. Satin, statin side effects. Already read them. Next. Bas next. All right. Thank you, sir. Basically, it's saying you either got to stop eating cholesterol or you got to take a statin. I agree with them. I agree with them. Next. All right. My brother, I appreciate what you're doing. And this is a picture of the stent. You know, the wire sleeve goes in. Boop. It opens up. I was on a Delta flight. The man sitting next to me put his carry-on bag up in the, uh, the thing, closed it up, caught his finger in there, began to bleed. I said, man, you need a Band-Aid. He said, I need more than that. I said, you're on blood thinners, aren't you? He said, yes. You get a bypass, you walk out with heparin in your pocket, and you're on it how long? To the day you die. You know the side effects of blood thinners, Coumadin and all these blood thinners, the side effect list on it that long. It's blood thinners. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying they're not necessary if you've had your plumbing rearranged, but the side effects. Hey, next. Thank you, my brother. I really appreciate this. Next. I hope. Welcome, friends, to the Barry Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm glad you could join us this evening. You know, they say, uh, if you have diabetes, leading cause of death is a coronary event for you. I had a friend named R.B. Sometimes you see me wearing one of his shirts. I got some of his clothes when he died. He checked into the hospital, never came out. I've lost close friends. Uh, you're, back, you're back about 10, so go forward. If you can, thank you, brother. Go, keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. Now, his name is R.B. I got another friend named Pastor Morris. I'd like him to be as live as long as possible, wouldn't you? I got another friend named you. <laughs> Cost effectiveness and analysis of stents, balloon angioplasty, they don't use that so much anymore, and the surgery. Next, this is the price structure, right? What they charge for, and that was, I told you, I had the, the, the thingamajig, the equivalency. Next, that was what they charge today. Next, and uh, that's how it is. It takes, this is how it works. It packs the cholesterol into the side. Next, perfect health depends upon perfect circulation. We know where that came from. Next, Harvard Health. That was the article, that's how you, what it should have said. Angioplasty does what? Nothing. 
It may give you some relief from chest pressure for a couple of weeks. It does nothing. Then why do they do it? $40,000 a pop, why do they do it if it doesn't do anything? And everybody knows it. And you know how many, and I'm not trying to pick on doctors. You know how many procedures in a cath lab one doctor does in one day? You take that 35,000 times 14, and that's what that hospital put in the bank. And it did what? No good whatsoever. And everybody knows it. Except who? Thank you. The patient. As a health evangelist, my work is to say, danger, men thinking. <laughs> Next. And that was just the, uh, that was just the, what I read. Next. Next. All right, here we go. Yeah. Uh, why you may need a heart bypass surgery. You got plaque buildup. Next. Uh, heart bypass the process. Cut your leg open. Get a vein. Reroute around the thing. Next. This is what I described. The, uh, oh, by the way. You got plaque in the heart, you got plaque everywhere, it's all systemic. This is the carotid artery being blocked by what? Cholesterol, and you can't hardly think, right? When the blood flow, anytime blood flow diminished in an artery called stenosis and narrowing down. This is stenosis of the artery going to the brain. That is not good. You need a sharp mind. I saw a, one a woman one time come to the program, change her lifestyle. She told me after she hugged me, she said, this is the first time in my life I can balance my checkbook. <laughs> Next. Uh, a place where you do not want to be. Next. It's a cartoon. Next. It's not the real thing. The real thing is too horrifying. Now, this is the video I showed. Now, tonight when I show it, it's a minute and a half long. It's the heart surgery. I'd like to put in some comments. Next. Next. I hope it plays. Oh, back up, back up. Leave it there, leave it there, leave it there. Uh, how old are people today that are getting bypasses? Next. How old are they? Children. Adolescents. Why so young? McDonald's. Hardee's. Burger King. Yeah, why? Yeah. Yeah. 12 years old? Next. Now, when I showed this the first time, I didn't show this next picture. It's a, it's a little diagram of what's in that blood tube. When they draw your blood, if you go to a hospital, they draw your blood. First thing they do is put it in a centrifuge and they spin the thing because it naturally divides. And next, it naturally divides into layers. And that layer on top, you should be able to see right through it. On the, uh, the one on the left, the man that had broccoli casserole for lunch, says, I had a broccoli salad. Thank you, Sister Morris. <laughs> I hope my blood is clear tonight. You can see through it. The other, you can't. So I like to, same video. And if you weren't here and you didn't see this, I put it in because you need to see this. Next. Uh, start it from up there. Jude, start the thing from up there if it won't start. There you go. And you make sure we got some volume. No volume? That's all right. I'll narrate. This is Alan Clapper. This man came. He's, he's going to have open heart surgery in the morning. Clapper's drawing his blood. Clapper is a lifestyle physician. He got the man and he drew his blood. And when he went down to the lab, they centrifuged it. And he said, something's not right with this man's blood. And as he lifts up the test tube, he says, it should not look like that. He went back to the man. Remember the question he asked him? Yeah, what did you eat? What did you have? What did you eat before he came to the hospital? Remember what he said? He had a burger, a shake, and some fries. And Alan Clapper says, what he's saying is, I looked at this blood tube and I knew I was seeing what? Yeah, the milk fat, the beef fat, the fat in his meal was in his blood. And this is what he, Mr. Phillips? And Mr. Phillips was about to go under the knife, and then the video changes 
to the doctors, and this is how they laugh and they joke as they cut your chest open. <laughs> Dr. Coupot, could you give me a hand in pulling out this rope of atherosclerosis? And they got two doctors, and as it pulls out, they're all kind of gasping and doing some laughing because it's business as usual. And that's it. And this is the guy that the surgeon says, remember at the end he says, the number one cause of death, atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, plaque buildup in the arteries. Now when he got this thing out, which is probably 18 inches long, uh, by the way, I don't think it's gonna, we, we, we've missed it, Esselstyn, Caldwell Esselstyn, the great heart man, was drafted into Vietnam back in 73, 74. He said, I repeatedly cut GIs open, 18, 19 years old, and visible signs of plaque buildup in their arteries, 18, 19 years old. Mr. Phillips is only probably in his 40s, <laughs> and this is what they're pulling out of his uh, arteries. Yeah. That's it. Now, if you send it down to the pathology lab, they analyze it, give a report. What's the report? Yeah. You know what the report is. It's plaque. Constituents, saturated fat, cholesterol, fibrin, calcium. There, there's Bill Clinton. I was going to tell you a story. The president, uh, next, I've already told you. We'll get to where he, where he gets some help. There he is. Shame on you, Pat, Mr. Clinton. Now, by the way, uh, what is Air Force One? What is that anyway? Do they feed him when he's on that plane? Now, you tell me who chooses the food. Huh? Of course. Come on, come on, of course. And then not some corporal cooking in the kitchen. The president says, this is the menu. They will not tell you what the president is being served. But my dear friends, they tell you the press corps eats just like the president. And the press corps will tell you exactly what they had for lunch. I'm doing something on what the president, Buckingham Palace, and the, and the, and the what do you, prime minister, what they, what's on their plate. I'd like to show you next. So this is a CNN interview. It's very short, so I don't get YouTube yanked. It's very short. Next. Yeah, that's not that. There you go. Yeah, start it. Just 12 seconds long. Wolf Blitzer, CNN, need some volume. We don't have volume. <laughs> what is what Wolf Blitzer, Blitzer saying is all these world leaders met. The subject is stability, the arms race, aggression from North Korea. And as the people came, they only wanted to know about one thing how Bill Clinton lost 24 pounds in, in three months. You know what he told them? Next. He said, my bypass began to block up. I called Esselstyn, next, T. Colin Campbell, China Study, and they gave me this kind of evidence. In July 2017, the artery to the heart had locked down. Two and a half years later, fully restored. Bill Clinton said, you don't have to tell me twice. He got rid of his doctors and got himself a chef salad. <laughs> that guy was smart. He was. He was, he was a genius. Yeah. Uh, uh, a salad. <laughs> yeah. I watched. He, uh, go to YouTube, interview Bill Clinton on his diet changes, dietary changes. He said, that's it for me. That's it. And then he said, finish the sentence. He said, I do not want to die. Next. Remember uh, Dean Ornish? This is very typical of the American mindset. I'm going to quote from him again. Next. Dean Ornish said, eating a vegetarian diet, walking, Exercising every day and meditating is considered radical. But they cut your leg open, cut your chest open, and butcher you like a hog, and is considered something ain't right. 
Now, we had a student in the Philippines. We called him Smiley because he was always smiling. <laughs> he was a warm guy. We got to be friends. Schools were like months or two months or 16, a long time. Will Smiley, radical change in his diet, going back to Manila. I said, hey, brother, you going to carry these changes with you? He said, yeah, 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 until my friends say, let's go down to KFC, and then I'm going with them. I said, why? Because if I don't go, they'll think I'm crazy. <laughs> they will think he's crazy. Clock, no. Can I just go three or four minutes extra? Look, John, th John 3, verses 1 and 2. The guy came by night, a ruler in the Jews. What's his name? Nicodemus. Why did he come by night? What's wrong with us? We let peer pressure dig our grave. What's wrong with us? Next. By the way, Nicodemus was a powerful man, member of the Sanhedrin, and a puppet to the people around him. Think. Now, this is the part I wanted to get to. Next. I uh, hope we have time. Yeah. Blocked up artery. Yeah, yeah, we saw that before. Next. But we didn't see this before. When people, this is out of Nedley's book. He's talking about debilitating depression. And he happened to notice that when people had debilitating depression, blood flow to their brain dropped. And he made the uh, theory, next, I'll read it to you. Uh, proof positive, 263 and four. Sophisticated brain scans reveal that depressed patients may have a 60% reduction on <laughs> front low blood flow. <laughs> And working with depressed patients, now if they, have a, if they have depressed blood flow in a depressed patient, if you want to help them with depression, what should you help them with? Blood flow. So how do you get people with depression to get increased blood flow? Yeah, they put them to work or you exercise them. I want to show you our gym. Is that okay? You mean you have a gym at your institution? Oh yeah. It's the only one in the world like it. There's only one. If you disagree, I'll eat both my shoes now. Oh, I've seen plenty of gyms. Not like ours you haven't. Next. Yeah, I mean business. There's the president coming off the plane. I don't know which one that was. Who is that? That's not. Yeah, next. But I know, what, I know what he eats. Yeah, there he sits. Next. Yeah, bring me some breakfast. Next. Bring me some lunch. Next, bring me some supper. <laughs> a hamburger, <laughs> come on. But it has the seal of the United States. My dear friends, that does not sanctify the hamburger. Next. That's the red blood cell. A component of that red blood cell is called hemoglobin. It transports oxygen. It's like a bus. And when that bus is filled up by, uh, you say, well, I don't smoke. When that bus is occupied by nicotine, I don't smoke. My dear friends, nicotine has a twin sister called caffeine. And the, and the, and the, and the family of poisons called alkaloids. Yeah, out there they smoke, and here we drink caffeine. Right? Same thing. Constricts blood flow, every blood flow, every artery in the body in seven seconds constricts the thing. Well, that's the red blood cell that carries oxygen. Next. And if you ever wondered, how the oxygen gets to the body, if you ever wondered, the transfer into the cell is made in the capillaries. They get smaller and smaller, called precapillary sphincters, smaller and smaller. Next. And this is really amazing here. This is extremely next. The picture will show you. On the head of a pen, you can stack 64,000. I did a lecture, nurse asked me, did you count them? <laughs> no, I didn't count them. 64,000. How many do you have in your body? More than 30 trillion. You mean to tell me they must be very small? Yeah, in order to go through the, 30 trillion, let it sink in, 30 trillion. To go through the capillaries, they gotta line up how? 
one by one. And it's the pressure of the capillary wall that presses the oxygen out into the cell. How small are those capillaries called what? Microcirculation. What's your brain full of? Microcirculation. That's Ben Carson. Next. I think I heard somebody say, holy moly. <laughs> Don't say that in the church. Holy moly. What you ought to say is unholy moly, right? By the way, that's a staged picture. There's enough benzo pyrene in those cigarettes to drop that man dead in one puff. That's a staged picture. We don't do that, do we? Next. A hearty thick burger. 220 milligrams of cholesterol. One egg, almost 200 milligrams of cholesterol. Lady came to the program, she said, I eat four eggs and I feel fine. I eat four eggs and I feel fine. I eat four, e <laughs> I mean, silent what? Killer. It's too late. Next. I already gave study to that. Need 120 milligrams. Most of us eat six, seven, eight, nine hundred. I feel great, silent what? Killer. Next. Now, diet and exercise. Somebody asked me the other night, this walking after you eat, yeah, no good. Oh, next. Sorry, my time. Is it good to take a nap on a roof? <laughs> what should they be doing? Walking. I'd like to give one or two reasons why. Next, I'll be done by 8.30. I'm sorry. You got to go to bed. Let's go ahead and go. That's an exercise ball. Isn't that thing wonderful? Isn't that thing wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> I need to say, I don't need to say anything. Next. Now, the gym. Have you ever seen a gym like that before? Was I right? Have you ever seen a gym like that before? Yeah. That's not our gym. Next. This is our gym. We play the video. Now what you can't hear is me saying, hit the thing, come on, Alan, hit the thing. I said, no good, man, come on, take another swing. Hit the thing. Come on, put your back into it. You, come on, don't give up, don't quit. You got three more strokes and you're going to break the thing. And the crowd behind, there's my wife in the blue shirt. This is our gym. And that man's not going to stop until he gets a what? A victory. You think he's going to do it? Now, wait a minute. One more, come on, one more boom. Now, watch his response. Come on, yes. <laughs> Here we go. That's our gym. That's it. Want to come over and work out with us? Yeah. Next. Give it a try. The effects of exercise on serotonin levels. Can exercise raise up these neurotransmitters in the brain? Can exercise do something to circulation in the brain? And if you have depression, it might help you. Can exercise and exercise and exercise next? We're coming down to the end. Exercise and stress get moving to manage your stress. If you have high stress, higher chance for having what? A heart attack, that's where we started, next. Serotonin, all it says is it raises serotonin level when you go in what? Lifestyle change, sunlight, diet, and exercise. Next, I'm racing the clock. Exercise and depression, Harvard Health Publications. Next, and we're just about done. That is an SSRI drug, selective serotonin re-up, 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 selective serotonin re-up in inhibitor. That's Zoloft. Next. One short little short study. Another study published in the Archives of Internal Medicine divided 156 men. You can read it. I'll tell you what it says. Put them in three groups. One group they gave Zoloft. One group they gave exercise. One group they gave nothing. And they put the, 30, they put the people on a randomized control trial. Another took the SSRI drug, drug Zoloft. And a third did next. And a third did both. At the 16-week mark, depression had eased. Which ones did it, Which ones got help? All three. 
In fact, group scores on two rating scales of depression were essentially the same. This suggests that for those who need or wish to avoid drugs, exercise might be an alternative, right? Next. There is a science, Virginia Riff, University of Wisconsin. She's talking about, as you read it, C-reactive protein. It's a protein in your body that is elevated when you have inflammation. A happy, thankful spirit can cut your risk of heart disease in tremendously. Now remember where we started? The rabbits, they got loved and their plaque went down. The people, they got loved and their plaque went down. Now, the last part is the hard part. Next. But it's an important part. Two questions and I'm finished. Is that good exercise? Now, in the States, next, in the States, pick your poison. The reason I say that, next, these are the types of psychotherapy that are being sold today in secular psychology. Not one has anything to do with God, not one. I was in a meeting in Rutgers, a Christian uh, banquet. I sat across from a young lady, it was Christian banquet, and I kind of struck up a conversation. I said to her, are you a student? You work, what do you do? I'm a student. Where do you go to school? Rutgers, this is where we were. It's the State University of New Jersey, Rutgers. I said, uh, what's your major? She said, psychology. I said, this is a secular university. Can you help people with their mind if you leave God out of the picture? Because in Rutgers, God's not in the picture. Can you help people with their minds if you leave God out of the picture? What do you think? So next, every bottle of antidepressants in the United States is sold with a warning that says it may make you kill yourself. Every depressant, antidepressant. FDA antidepressants and suicide, the FDA warns and it was put in every bottle. Now, make believe for a second that I'm your psychiatrist. You come to me with debilitating depression. I say $400 because I can't prescribe unless I first evaluate. I make an evaluation, I make a determination, bipolar, I write a prescription. It's Paxil, 400 you pay me for my visit, 400 for a 30 day supply you pay out of your pocket. You spend $800 and you go home. Now, erase that. You come to me, you say I've got debilitating. By the way, you get home and you open up the label and it says this may make you kill yourself. And then you call me and you say, why did you give me a pill that might make me kill myself? I came to you because I was suicidal. And I say to you, tell me your response. That's my only option. What do you want me to do? That's my only option. What, what do you want me to do? Now, you come to me, $400, I write a prescription, you go home, it says, take a walk. How do you feel? Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. (laughs) You pay $400, you go home, it says, take a walk. How do you feel? Thank you, cheated. My brother? Dear friends, we don't want the plan. When we get the plan, we feel what? Cheated. Give me a pill. Don't have to change. We feel cheated. Next. Here's the problem. This is right to the root of it. This is infrared thermography. When you take a picture in Canada of somebody that's buck naked, it shows up shades of hot and cold. The cold shows blue and white. The hot, the heat in your body shows orange and red. If you go outside naked, what's the first thing that gets cold? 
Yeah, your nose, your ears, because there is little circulation on the extremities, fingertips, toes, it's little, little circulation. So when you take a picture, this is blue, this will turn red. Well, they took a, two groups, they took a group of students, divided them in two, next. They took a thermograph of the brains. One group, before the test, they said, go out and walk. The other group, they said, have a seat. Which group did, and then they took a picture of their brain, which group did better on the test? Yes, by far. Next. Now, that's, I'm done, except to sum up by saying this. My me the medical director at Wildwood was Scott Grievous, a friend of mine. I got my physical every year. I went in to get my physical, took a stethoscope, he listened to my heart. He'd done it for years. He listened to my heart, and this time, he didn't just listen and move the stethoscope. He listened, and he listened, and he listened, and he listened. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, shh, be quiet. And he listened. Hey, what's up? Shh. He looked at me. He said, you've got a click. Your heart is synchronized to chambers, right? One opens, one closes, they're synchronized. If the synchronization is a little off, it might be a click. Well, yeah, yeah. Now, but mine, a little click. I said, am I going to die? He says, a little click, it'll go away. Next year, it was gone. But my dear friends, if it's a murmur, a whooshing sound, there are certain sounds you don't want to hear. Because if you have a murmur in your heart, it's an indication you might have heart disease. My dear friends, if you have a murmur in your mouth, it's an indication you got spiritual heart disease. And that's a killer to life everlasting. It will ruin your health, increase your risk of a heart attack, and be bad news for those around you. Murmuring and complaining. Uh, Philippians 4 verse 4, rejoice in the Lord when? And again I say, Virginia Riff, rolling it out there in Wisconsin, a merry heart doeth good like a? She didn't say it like that, but that's what she said. They say depression can be helped by some exercise, fresh air, sunshine, and on and on and on and on and on. Dear friends, it's a connection between the spiritual heart and the physical heart. Luke 6 verse 45, I the abundance of the the mouth speaks. So if you want heart health tonight, sure, eat the oat burger. But dear friends, we need an attitude of, I don't like, I don't like to rhyme things. We need an attitude of thanksgiving. And I tell you what, I'm thankful for the time I spent with Scott. We talked a while the other day. That man encouraged me. I, I told when he left, I told him, I said, I told you, I said, I'm encouraged. As he departed, you know what he said to me? You know what he said to me? He said, give me a hug. Yes! My heart began to sing. Gave him a hug. Yes! And if you're a black cloud, engaged in pity parties nonstop, instead of being a blessing, you turned into a curse. I haven't seen any curses in the church. It's a blessing, church. Feel blessed from beginning to end. And if I've roughed you up tonight, I am sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. But I see the plan and I see it working and I see people dropping de down dead all the time. And it is not necessary. Now, I'm sorry I got so long-winded. I can blame the, uh, the thing. But you notice, as I pray because I'm done, the part underlined says what? A vigor of what? Intellect. The vigor of intellect. Now, I don't have any, I, I'm, I'm kind of deadhead. I don't have much of an intellect. But if I did, I'd say, well, it's from eating carrots and cabbage and from walking. Sister Mars said, did you go out and walk? I say, yeah. Sometimes she'll, I'll tell her why. I tell her, I always say this, I'm a mess. I need help. And while I walk, I pray. I said, Lord, I need help. Father in heaven, help us tonight. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lou, that was a very hard session for me to listen to tonight. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to keep you for five more minutes. I was a wife that watched my husband walk through those steps. From the stent to the bypass, six years. Six bypasses, 39 inches worth of scarring, his leg, his arm, his chest. Takes an hour for the ICU people, when they roll them in from the hospital, from the operation, an hour to hook them up to all the equipment. Every vital is recorded in a binder every 15 minutes. When your nurse goes on break, the nurse in the ICU unit beside you double monitors so they can monitor and then they're still being monitored on the desk. It's, you can't even imagine how many wires, beepy things, is going on. It's frightening to walk in that room. Then, when he's ready to come home, they call you in. You have to go sit with a special nurse because they have to take you through all the drugs he's going to need when he goes home. You sit down. They have Excel sheets. There's probably 15 drugs on each sheet, and the ones you need are highlighted. So they take you through what they are. Then you have to take this to the pharmacy. You have to spend an hour with the pharmacist because he has to give you a lesson in what you're going to do. You come home, you've got these 18 drugs, and you go, how am I even going to do this? I'm not a nurse. So I thought, the only thing I could think of, number them. So this number here, I'd dig through the pill bottles till I could find it, and I'd mark it number one. This one's number two, and I went through them all. And they're all taken at different times throughout the day. Some is one a day, some is three times a day. It's horrible, and I was trying to get to work, right? Like, it, you can't even imagine. Then when you finally get to the rehab portion, you get to the, the uh, dietician. You know what they tell you? Mediterranean diet, one piece of meat the size of a deck of cards, only once a month if you only need it. They know. They know. And then after we got through all of that, six years he has a stroke because his carotid arteries, one was blood plugged 70%, 190. Stroke, five weeks, death. Everything he says is true. Please don't let it be you. There's a choice. And it's not just your life, it's the people that are around you. You have no idea what I went through. You have no idea what it's like to watch the person you love go through that. And then you know you're ending up with what? Versus walking, like, juggle it, balance it, weigh it out. Weigh it out. Because it, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible to watch. And then there's, of course, there's always those little hurdles that I'm not even going to get into because I know you want to go home tonight. I just told you the snippet. But there was lots in that journey, and it's all a downhill slope going to the death. So please, please, brothers and sisters, don't let it be you. So with that, it's time for our offering. And no questions tonight. OK, sorry, folks. So save your questions. Thank you. I, I, lost my husband. I don't want anybody else to have to lose their loved one for that, for that topic. It's horrible. Anyway, if our deaconesses will come forward, please. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together tonight to learn. Father, let us take what we're learning home and apply it to our lives. 
Holy Spirit, stir us up and encourage us to change where we need to change, the strength to go through it. Lord, your word says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us tap into that joy and let us make the necessary changes. And Father, we just ask that you bless those who can give and those who can't, and we ask you to multiply this offering for your use. In Jesus' name, amen. bow your heads with me to pray. <clears throat> Loving and gracious Father, Lord, um, I think some of us, maybe our eyes were open, maybe we were challenged by things tonight, and, and that's a good thing, Lord. Let what we've learned be truly um, sunk deep into our hearts so we can be transformed, Lord, all that we're learning. Please, let us not continue on with the things that we're doing that are not good for us, that are not bringing us good health. Help us to to, um, to just do it, not to wait, not to make excuses, not to say, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week, whatever it is, Lord. Um, give us a, impress us to um, not wait, because we don't have time. And And Lord, to also think about it's not just for ourselves, it is for those around us, it's for our loved ones, those who care for us, for our families. And let that also be motivation for us. And uh, Father, we thank you so much for this time we have. And bless us all as we leave. Amen. <laughs>